Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Josh Fraser. I'm one of the co-founders of Origin Protocol. It's a real honor and, and pleasure to be here with you today. Uh, we are so amazed by the community uh, that we are a part of and, and everywhere we go around the world to find people who are excited about this new movement of, of blockchain and, and cryptocurrency. So since the creation of the internet, digital marketplaces have been bringing together buyers and sellers in ways that were never before possible. It started in 1995 with the launch of Craigslist, which took classifieds out of a newspaper and put them on the internet. In the same year, 1995, eBay took it one step further. And said so the internet has connected every human on the planet to every other human on the planet. It doesn't matter which city you live in. Now you have a way to find and transact directly with other people. Fast forward to today, and we have hundreds of different types of digital marketplaces that we can use. Many of them are in this category which we call the sharing economy. Companies like Uber and Airbnb and Grab and DD. And these companies have changed the world because they allow us not only to buy atomic units, but also to sell fractional usage of assets and services. The question we ask ourselves every day at Origin, and the question I want you to think about today is this. What if? What if we could replace every single one of these multi-million and multi-billion dollar companies with open source protocols which aren't owned or controlled by anyone? What if we could create marketplaces which are instead governed by a set of open and fair and transparent rules? We call this the sharing economy without intermediaries. And there's four really big reasons why we think this is important and meaningful for the world. The first is when we cut out the middleman, the fees go with it. And what we've seen with the sharing economy marketplaces, the Ubers and the Airbnbs of the world, they take 20, 30, sometimes 40% out of every transaction. And it's better for both a buyer and the seller if we get rid of the middleman. I mean, everyone gets a slightly better deal. The second benefit is we remove that single point of failure. We've seen the downside of centralization all over the place, from Facebook, Facebook abusing our data to um, these centralized companies being uh, very easy to, to shut down. And we've seen this with Uber being banned in cities all over the world. They're banned in London, they're banned in Vancouver, they're banned in the entire country of Argentina. In fact, the government, the taxi cabs in Argentina have, have worked with the government to make sure that it's banned at the ISP level as well as the credit card provider level to make sure that no one can access uber.com or, or do that. Airbnb has faced similar problems, even in their home city of San Francisco, but it's heavily, heavily regulated um, to the point that uh, it's very hard to use. Now, we can't change the laws but we can remove that single point of failure, and blockchain gives us a way to do that, where now we can actually transact in a, in a truly peer-to-peer -peer fashion. Now, we, th we think of these marketplaces as peer-to-peer, -peer, right? We're, we're sharing with each other, but in reality, these marketplaces have become peer to giant corporate monopoly to peer marketplaces. The third thing that really excites us, and the third reason uh, we want to build this, is to redistribute the value to the people in the network who, are, who actually deserve it. The people who are creating the most value in the network to begin with. I had a ride the other day with a guy. He told me he was the 30th driver on Uber. And he's still driving for Uber today, and he's complaining because he's making less money today than when he first started. When Uber IPOs, that guy it won't see a penny. But the company wouldn't be here to, if it wasn't for him and the, the hundred other drivers who were the very first people on the platform who got that network started. Same can be said true for Airbnb or any digital marketplace. And so as we think about how do we go up against 
multi-million and multi-billion dollar companies. How can we take them on? The only way we can do it is with a blockchain-driven incentive system, which rewards the early participants in the network, gives them a reason to use it and to invite their friends to use it, even in the early days, when, let's face it, the user experience may be you know, less polished and more difficult to use than some of the centralized alternatives that we have. And the fourth reason is something I'm very passionate about, and is how do we serve the unbanked and the underbanked people on this planet? I've heard the number is somewhere around 2 billion people, they say, don't have bank accounts, don't have credit cards, and are often not welcome on centralized platforms, which if you don't have uh, a credit card, these uh, digital marketplaces are very hard to use. And so what's exciting is that most of these people, they may not have a credit card, but they have an inexpensive Android phone, or someone in their family does. And so for billions of people on this planet, the very first interaction or experience they will ever have with a digital marketplace will be on a peer-to-peer -peer system on something like Origin. So there's a few other problems we can just mention quickly about you know, the problems we have with centralized marketplaces today. We have data is siloed. Everyone owns, you know, each of these companies have their own data, and that's their proprietary uh, thing that they protect. For consumers, you have a different username and a different password for each of these different apps on your phone. And all of your reputation from each, using these different services is siloed to each service. We think blockchain gives us a, a great way to remove that friction and have what we call a shared network effect, where one Ethereum wallet is enough for you to transact across all of these uh, different marketplaces. We also see problems with like, lack of innovation, because the companies have too much of a monopoly position, and they stop innovating. And we also, as consumers, we're subject to arbitrary rule changes at any point in time these companies can change the rules, and you, as the consumer, have absolutely no say. And so, we're, at Origin, we're working to, to fix this, and we're building three things. First, we're building a protocol. These are smart contracts that live on the Ethereum blockchain that provide those transparent rules for these marketplaces uh, to be governed by. On top of that, we're building a platform, a platform for other developers, business owners, to be able to create their own decentralized peer-to-peer -peer marketplace uh, using our protocols. And of course, we're also building a community. We're built on top of Ethereum and IPFS. So Ethereum is um, one of the largest uh, communities uh, we've had, and we've, by far, we've got the strongest uh, developer tools and community around it today. One of the challenges with Ethereum Vo is scalability. It's very slow and expensive uh, to use that network, um, and data storage is, is, is really expensive. And so we're also using IPFS uh, for, uh, to reduce some of the costs of, of storing data on the blockchain. So for those of you who are um, sitting there, and maybe you're, you're new to, to crypto, or you're still getting up to speed on how this works, and you're scratching your head saying, how can you build a a marketplace on the blockchain. How does this even work? Well, let's start with the example of, of Bitcoin. You know, many of you may not realize this, but Bitcoin was not the first attempt at building a digital currency. There were many other attempts before, but they all suffered from one common problem. It's something you can all relate to, because digital files are very easy to copy. They're very easy to send to friends. Well, when digital files represent money, that's a problem. You need scarcity. And so what Bitcoin did was solve this problem, what is, what is known as the double spin problem. And the way they did that is very simple and very elegant. They said, let's, take a, let's think of it like a ledger. Think of it kind of like an Excel spreadsheet of who owns how much money. And then we'll have everyone in the world keep a copy of that so that no one can cheat. And we'll use consensus algorithms um, or as a way of coming to agreement on what the state of this ledger should be. Vitalik Buterin, the founder of Ethereum, came along and took it one step further. And he saw Bitcoin and he said, oh, we can use that same ledger, except instead of just tracking how much money everyone has, 
we can actually store the internal state of a computer. And this was revolutionary. It gave us programmable money. It gave us smart contracts. and allows us to build things like Origin, decentralized marketplace where um, you can now use Ethereum to track the important parts of that transaction. Who bought what, when, who's booked to stay in your apartment tonight, um, who's paying for your time you know, or services. And so the main things we're building, we've got Origin JS. For those of you in the audience that know Stripe, um, Stripe is a good analogy for what we're trying to do. They're a payments company. They take all of the complexities of dealing with the traditional finance world, and they hide it away in a library that makes it easy for any developer to get up and running with and accept credit card payments in 10, 15 minutes. We want to do something very similar with Origin, except instead of accepting payments, we want to allow the creation of digital marketplaces. So you can create your own marketplace on Origin.js. Of course, we have the Origin DAP, which allows, uh, gives you a user interface for how you interact with these listings. And so we can give you a quick demo here on what this looks like. So this is live right now at demo.originprotocol.com for anyone who wants to check it out yourself. You can use any web free enabled browser to do this. So what you can see here, we're creating a listing. And we're, we use something called JSON schema, which is a Mozilla project. And this allows us to ensure the, uh, the format of the data that is being stored on the chain. So create the, the listing. JSON schema does the validation. When we create it, we take that JSON. We publish that JSON to IPFS, we take that content hash and store that on the Ethereum network. And that gives a, that way it's cryptographically linked and secure. And so now we can publish this, and you can do this with MetaMask, with Mist, with uh, any mobile browser that supports it, like uh, Toshi or Cypher. You can submit the transaction. Here we're posting the transaction to the smart contracts that live on the Ethereum network. Today it's live on Rinkby and Robston, so you can check this out for yourself. And there we go, we have our listing that anyone can come and book. Now keep in mind, there's no central server in the mix at all. This is all 100% peer-to-peer. Today we have over 45 partners that have committed already to building on top of our platform. Several of them have actually started working on their own implementations, reading and writing to our smart contracts using Origin.js. And they cover a whole range of different verticals, from home sharing to ride sharing to services. Um, and we're incredibly thrilled by all of the, the partners that are, are already committed to, to working on us. A little bit about myself and the team. So before I started on Origin, I created three venture-backed companies, and um, sold one of them to Walmart Labs. My co-founder, Matt, was early YouTube, was 25th employee at YouTube, was part of that acquisition to Google, and then went on to um, work at two other startups, both of which had successful exits. Andrew Hyde is leading a community for us. He was the founder of Startup Weekend, has deep network all around the world. Uh, he was also first employee at Techstars. Stan has a background in game design, first blockchain engineer we hired, uh, an in incredible uh, in engineer, and it's been uh, really helpful for us. Yupan is, is maybe the most legendary member of our team. He was uh, the founder of a company known as PayPal, which probably everyone in this room has heard of. Um, and then he went on and was the first engineer at YouTube. Kun was head of engineering at Dropbox before he came in and joined us. He also worked with Yupan at both PayPal and YouTube was first 10 employee at both those companies. John and Coleman are doing business development and partnerships for us and doing just a phenomenal job there. And then Tyler and, and Micah are uh, two of the newest members of our team. They're part of, you know, we're a 100% open source project. And so the cool thing about that is people can find us, you can see what we're working on, what our challenges are, and anyone can jump in and contribute. And so Micah and Tyler, two guys, found our project, just started contributing, and um, we were you know, happy to bring them on full time and uh, be able to work with them more. We're backed by 
some of the, the biggest uh, investors in the space. Pantera Capital uh, from the United States was the first investor uh, and followed with um, you know, some, some great funds, hashed right here in Korea, um, FBG, Pre-Angel, and others in China, um, Smart Contract Japan, um, and you know, some of these big funds in, and individuals in the United States as well, like Foundation Capital, Block Tower Capital, Gary Tan, who was one of the uh, partners at Y Combinator, Alexis Ahanin, who is the founder of Reddit, one of the top visited websites on the internet, uh, and Gil Putina, the top angel investor on AngelList. Um, so we're, we're really thrilled to have such, uh, such great backing from so many investors from all over the world. Today, we're actually doing uh, an additional round of funding. It's actually open right now. Um, we're going to be closing it in a few hours of the registration process. So if you're interested at all, go check this out at CoinList. Um, we're going to be raising another $6.5 million just at the tail end um, of our fundraising round. And our goal here is really about how do we get more people involved? We want, um, we, we really believe in the power of incentives. And what we've seen with our existing investors is that they're willing to go to great lengths to help a project, to share it with their friends, and help make introductions and, and help a project. And so while we don't really need the money, we are interested in ways that we can have more people incentivized more people involved in what we're doing. We know the community is, is one of the most important things about what we're building at Origin. So if you're interested in, in learning more about that, you can go to our website, or you can go to coinless.co slash origin to find out more about that. Today, we're looking for developers, we're looking for marketplace businesses and strategic partners. So if you're a developer and you're interested in contributing to an exciting open source project, that has the potential to revolutionize marketplaces of the future, we'd love for you to jump in and, and check out our code base uh, and start contributing. If you're a marketplace business, whether you're an existing company that already has users, you know, we work, for example, working with Service Hero out of Southeast Asia, have hundreds of thousands of users that are building on top of the Origin platform. Or if you're a brand new project, you're looking at building, you know, starting from scratch, and you're looking for a partner to help build your marketplace and help you get to market faster, we'd love to talk with you as well. And so that's it. Thank you guys for your time.